Hello, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. How have you been the past week? Or maybe longer if you've missed me last week and the weeks before. So, uh, how have you been? I've been uh, quite busy uh, myself uh, with, well, lots of stuff, mostly development. Uh, it was great weather over here, so I spent, well, the weekend offline doing fun stuff with the kids and the wife and now I'm back well working uh, so uh, today uh, this won't be an, well a high profile learning thing stream or at least not for me like at least that's what I expect now uh, what I'll be doing today is well cleaning up a bit the, the mess I made in the past episodes uh, you might remember me creating the secure API application where I was putting a service uh, well behind some authorization from which you could only uh, get into the service or make calls if you had specific roles so that worked uh, did a couple of sessions on on this at uh, some events some virtual events and uh, I also placed an app service behind VNet, so only traffic via this VNet could get through. Uh, so uh, it was, it's a bit of a mess, uh, the solution I created now. So there's a lot of, well, noise, some, some well, dirty code uh, in the solution. So I want to clean this up. And I also would like to create the app registrations in the Azure Active Directory uh, via PowerShell or the CLI or something, at least not manually uh, inside the Azure Active Directory. I don't know if I will get around to this today, uh, otherwise next week, or maybe somewhere in between when I'm not live coding, because I will probably do some coding on Thursday also, just not with the camera pointed to my face. Uh, so that's it. Uh, oh, some some great news though. Um, I got accepted to speak at a MS Stage event. So there's the apparently I didn't knew about this this well uh, this this event. Uh, but uh, a friend of mine, Henry Bain, uh, pointed out pointed it out on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, so I well. Did the CFP and now I got accepted to the MS stage. It's uh, an event uh, in Kiev, completely well uh, organized uh, by by the community. It's free and it it has invited a couple of speakers. It will be a virtual event in October, um, so that's too bad. So I won't get to meet anyone, but uh, at least uh, it's it's a nice event again. Uh, so and a couple of uh, great speakers. So uh, most of them I know already. So that's that's fun to to see them to see them again. Um, so uh, if you have nothing to do or or just want to well hang out with me in in the chat uh, for this event, go to this. Uh, go to the wow. My name is quite quite big compared to the other speakers along with Christosis. Cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, anyway, if you want to hang out with me on the 2nd of October, uh, feel free to uh, register on their event and uh, well, maybe we'll talk then also. If you want to talk to me today, feel free to do so. Uh, I've got some time uh, and I, I just need to talk to anyone. I, I'm. I was quite busy today, so it's was the it's the first day I did something serious stuff with Azure Logic Apps, and I don't know if you're familiar with them, but it's well, it's a new kind of pain, or at least to me. So, you probably know I'm not a big fan of ARM templates, or at least the readability and creating them. Uh, I I think they're a necessary evil. 
So and today I dove a bit into logic apps and creating them via the portal and creating them via the portal works. Um, but uh, you don't want to create them via the portal. So I was uh, well looking on how to deploy them via some release pipeline. And apparently what you need to do or can do is create them in the portal or in Visual Studio or uh, in VS Code with some plugins. And it will create a big, well, object of JSON. And you can just paste this JSON inside an ARM template and deploy it. So that was, I was a bit like, wow, that's not exactly what I expected. But apparently it works and I guess some people are happy with it. Uh, so maybe I just have to get used to it uh, a bit. Anyway, that was my day today. Fun. Uh, so I'll continue this tomorrow uh, during the working day. But now I just want to do some actual coding, some C Sharp stuff, some .NET stuff and not spend my whole evening in JSON. So I'll show you. Oh, you probably didn't see the, the page MS stage uh, because it wasn't big. So this is the MS stage uh, site, msstage.com. So the 2nd of October, and you can see there are a couple of speakers already. So uh, one, two, four, seven. And apparently there will be 15 speakers. 16 talks, so I guess one will be the keynote. And 16, uh, 15 speakers, so there are still eight to be announced. Who knows? Who knows who it will be? Check it out. So that's it. Um, yeah, so this is my solution, which I mentioned. It uh, has a lot of stuff. Some workers, I won't be touching the workers today, I guess. They're not doing any much yet. Some storage accounts, which I will also not touch. I will try to, well, uh, I will touch these, well, not the staging slot. Uh, these three, the front BFF, the backend for front end API, uh, the conferences and the speakers API. Um, First, I'll do some refactoring over here uh, to make it a bit more pretty. And then I will probably go to, well, I need to configure this one to do some authorization. So, which I can do, but I need an app registration for this in AAD. So, I might just start with putting this one behind the VNet in, uh, in my ARM template which should be a couple of lines of JSON. Don't know. Or at least that's why I expect what I expect, but we'll see. So this is the solution. If you haven't followed along, which I can imagine is, uh, well, this is what we have. The three APIs, some workers, which are the Azure functions. We don't uh, contracts assembly. So no, nothing uh, very fancy. The, the ARM template and the build pipeline. That's about it. Um, so should I make the font a bit bigger? Is it readable? I think it should be readable. If I crank it up a bit. It will, yes, so, okay. I've cranked it up a bit. Well, well, it has to be usable to me also. 100, 1.25. Okay, so that's good enough. I think it, I think it's good enough. Let me, let me just check the stream. So, where is it? Which? my stream so i don't need to 
unmute myself. So this is quite readable. Oh wow! <laughs> Obviously, uh, so yeah. So this this text is quite readable. Bad resolution though. Is it is that me? So quality auto. 720 so it's a 720 wow that's that's bad so if you want to see the stuff in a better resolution check out my youtube uh, channel because it it will be a bit it will be this is recorded recorded in 180p 1080p i mean so it will be better Anyway, the solution. So this is the startup. So I won't be touching this. Uh, oh, there's a speaker startup. Let me just close everything down. And I will start cleaning up over here. So I have this test backend controller, which I started. Well, which is the first controller I had. API call details. So this is something I can mm, put inside a view model, a model response folder. So I will add a models response for well, uh, responses. Uh, put this one create a derived class now put it inside create another part of this type now I just oh it's a private class okay add class I have added a lot of stuff. API call details so an access token the body stays code response reason. Okay, API call details RG. Mm -hmm. So this will invoke the speaker service. This is a get, so it makes sense to put this inside the speaker controller, if you ask me. And you're asking me because it's my solution. So I'll put it over here. Uh, so the logger. Need to add a logger. Configuration. Uh, logger. Okay, and um, I'm turning on the music. Invoke speaker service. It's this one. Private. <coughs> okay, put in this one. Generate access token. Also, okay, add your service token provider. <laughs> client factory, what is this? The client factory, it's the client factory. Need to add it in the controller. Okay. Good thing I don't have tests yet, otherwise all of them would break. So in folk speaker service and what's this other oh, this client factory? Oh I didn't set it yet. Hmm. 
bigger information. So, is it returned? It's new. Request. Models. Request. Speaker info. And maybe I can just put it, move the speaker information. Okay. Fixing the namespace. If you want to see your name below my below my face, make sure to well subscribe to this channel on Twitch because then Casey's name will be gone as the most recent follower and yours will be there. So just so just a small vanity tip. This is it, executing. Oh, I can just do this also, executing add. Executing, executed. This is not necessary because Application Insights will also add well, these type of login lines. It's just, well, I, I do think this can be useful to have the executing and executed uh, log messages inside your application because this way you know your code will be hit and is hit. Uh, so if you have some issue in your middleware or routing or whatever uh, at least you know it got here or it didn't get here so if there's an application insights request stating executing add you know this log line should also be uh, sent to application insights and if it isn't you know there's something wrong it never reached your controller so might be useful have it here. This is from the contracts assembly, or at least I think it will. Yeah, it's a command. Mm. So we have this get and an add, and that's all we have. Private, private, private. Info, speaker service. Maybe I should rename this to get speakers. This makes it a bit more clear on what it does. Mm, I should probably. It's not very pretty. Well, mm, yeah, I can live with this, creating the response over here. For now, I can live with this. Generate access token. Mm. And get speakers, get access token. So this is fairly straightforward. I could well abstract this stuff a bit more, but for now it's Okay, it works. Get the connection string. I don't know. That's fairly obvious. Stupid comment. And now I probably had this in here for the for the demos, so everyone can follow. So maybe I'll just add a couple of additional lines. Um, you 
application ID Yuri Okay, just make it clear. So this is what I found out. If you have an account which exists in multiple tenants, you, well, you're not getting an authorization token from the tenant you expect it to be, or at least you don't have to get an X token from it. So it's a good thing to specify it over here. Uh, you can get it, well, rather easily when you're working with ARM templates. Mm -hmm. So also a comment. This one can be removed. Send to the queue. So this is quite readable. There's backend controller, so I a root controller. What does it do? Nothing. This was for my warm-up my health endpoints um, so add a new controller API controller conferences controller and I should be able to copy paste most of this stuff. Mm -hmm. I need this stuff. The dependencies are pretty much the same. Well, here's something fun. My daughter is sleeping within 10 minutes these days, so that's cool. So we stopped doing naps in, in the afternoon from 1 p.m. till 3 p.m. And now she's so tired in the evening, or no, not so tired, but at least she's more tired. So after talking and singing about for 10 minutes with her, she now sleeps instead of screaming for about an hour, an hour and a half. So that's a pretty big win. Uh, so that's why I was in time to start this stream today. I think we get. Yeah. This also without. Mm, post the post info. Oh, I don't have a post. I'm not posting conferences. I'm just re retrieving them. Okay, cool. So that's it. That's the first cleanup. This one can be removed. I probably need to launch settings. So where is this one going to the health endpoint? Okay, good enough. Uh, do I still have the health endpoint? Warm up. No. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder, does this work? Set a startup. 
Where will it go? Where will it go? Help. It's healthy. Okay, so probably have this in startup. Configured somewhere at health checks. Okay, so this one probably added at check speaker service. Okay, okay, cool. Check service. Create client. Okay, so I got a health endpoint and it's still valid. So now I got the speaker and the conferences controller. Fork. Let's create a small feature branch for this. Uh, feature slash cleanup solution. Actions to That's the first step. So, and now I need to, well, I need, as I mentioned, I also want to add authorization to the conferences API. So I need to create a client factory and get the access token from over here also. For this, I first need to add some app registrations inside my tenant again using a script. So I will not do this at the moment. So this is the first step. The first thing I want to do, or let, let's see if everything still works. Um, speaker controller. Yeah, so speaker controller. the API speaker let's get it will probably have some yeah no. so can't access it for reasons mm, this is kind of what I expected let me see if this actually is what I expect Mm. This is probably good. It's probably good. I get this one. Check it out later. At least it's making a call to the back end. So it's conference list. And this one is also not available. Which is because uh, the web app you have attempt to reach has blocked access. That's because it's behind the VNet. So that's also what I expected. But at least my controllers work. <coughs> um, I will go to VS Code now. And this is my ARM template, the deployment template. And I will add some. I will add VNet support. So my backend for front end has VNet integration. 
to this subnet. Uh, we can check it out. Ah, I can hear my wife and son getting back home. They were out at her or at her parents, so doing some coffee. And I guess they will go to bed, or at least my son will go to bed in a couple of minutes. So if you hear something, that's him. So this is the back and the front end, this is the VNet integration. Good stuff. This is the conferences uh, app service, which is behind a VNet. So, as it depends on IP security restrictions. So I will need to copy paste this to the properties of the speaker API also. And I will probably um, make this a bit better in a later commit. I will just add this first. Uh, because I don't like copy pasting stuff around. Uh, so this can be done a bit smarter. But I will copy paste it for now. So, mm, WebSockets enabled. Over here. Backend services. This, this looks about right. This looks about right. So now it will have an IP restriction. Looks about right. Oh, what's this? What's this? The speakers. Oh, this is the function. These are the functions. Yes, the workers. So I'll keep this. Um, should I test this stuff? Should I test it? I'm pretty sure it's okay. I'm fairly, fairly sure it's okay. Last. Um, need to select a different subscription. Um, one moment. Um, which subscription is this stuff hosted in? Um, this is in MVP2. Let me just copy paste the CLI commands and over here I have this one I will probably validate it first group deployment oh, oh sorry um, It's group deployment, deployment group. I think this is about the only change we need to do. Group validates. Well, so this looks about right. This looks about right. Otherwise it would have turned red. Oh, some other great news, which was, well, also known last week. Uh, I'm renewed for my MVP award, so for the upcoming year I'm still a Microsoft Azure MVP, which is cool, which is cool.
Mm -hmm. Am I hearing the same song the whole time or not? Next. Okay, so I know this is a different song. So it got deployed. Let's see if this one is behind the VNet now. Networking. Access restrictions. So yes, it's behind the VNet now. So I wasn't able to uh, make a connection to it before, obviously, uh, because I'm not specifying slash API slash um, uh, what is it? Weather forecast forbidden because it blocked your actors. But what what is the endpoint? What is the endpoint? Is it those? Now it's the speakers controller. So speakers. And I need. So also forbidden because I don't have access, or I'm not routing via the VNet. Okay. Hmm. Let's see if, if my let's API slash speakers. Um no. Oh what was the URL? What was the URL? Mm, localhost, so that's not it. What was the URL? So this one should also still work. Um, test backend. So this one will make a call to the speakers API. And as you can see, it's still over here. So this one still works. Still have X stuff. So this is the old code before I refactored it. Works. So that's good. I can uh, commit this one. Okay. So let me see the cleanup tasks. Um, hmm. So what a jet did just now wasn't on my cleanup tasks list. What is on there is my server farm instance needs a prefix. So what did I mean with this is server farm. Ah, so it doesn't have a prefix. That's well. I'd like to keep things consistent. Still why why would i do this i'm thinking about it why prefix this stuff with yamfe i can't think of any good reason to prefix it for searchability, mm. you can use tags for it. Maybe I should add tags. Tags, cleaning up. Um, so tags. Am I using tags? I don't think so. No. Um, so I will create. Default tags. Uh, I think tags is an array of values. 
Live coding. Live coding. Okay. Is this true? Uh, tags. Where is it? Tags. Hmm. Um, let me look it up. There's probably some. Azure Resource Manager Template Reference. Add tags, tag resources, tags. Okay. Deploy it is, is fun. So that's a good one. Parameter here to see short. That's it's CD, okay. project well this isn't actually a project secure api project is secure api and so what more what more why is this template is not valid Oh. Hmm. That's not fun. Parameters here to see short then. Project and um, machine API. Okay. To my add the tag, I'm doing this for my live coding. Hmm. What to call it? So the value will be live coding. Purpose live coding. Okay. Climb object. Default X. Okay. Oh, you can also inherit them from the resource group. That's fun. But 
this will probably work also for eyeballs. Maybe false tags. Oh, it's the only, the only one I specified it. So you should be able to do add them everywhere. Um, open them. Um, location, maybe everything has a location. Yeah, specifying it just below. If you have an opinion on me using the tags like this, let me know. Maybe I can improve this. If you have any reasons for me to do this differently. Oh, that's double. So add the tags. Mm -hmm. Add that, so again. Okay. Uh, that's tax, well, hmm. I mentioned tax for uh, Git. So adding tags to Git for demos in my sessions, but that's not necessary. Or at least I don't think that's necessary at the moment. <laughs> so. Um, big conferences and the speakers. Okay, so these are valid. I guess these are still valid. Those will change. So that's, so that's it for this part. Close all. And I should be able to deploy this. Yeah, only thing left is me deploying the stuff. And adding authorization to this one which I can copy paste from over here. Most of it anyway. No, I can't add everything. So the startup over here, add controllers, which is still necessary. Mm, this is a bit of a copy paste, but not an actual. At least I don't think this is true uh, duplication. I think it's okay to have this copy pasted for now. Need this, and did I add something to the program also? No, apparently not. 
cleaning up. Weather forecast. Okay, remove this one. Launch big conferences. Okay. Speakers also okay. What I have now. Now I need this. So over here. <coughs> and this is the stuff which we'll get from the Active Directory. So the, this one and this one. Yeah, you can see this in the parameter file I got over here. So the app ID, URI, and the client ID. Um, yeah, I need to make this these more um, specific. because there are now scopes to the speaker API and I need to make them more specific. Yeah. Authority, client ID, application ID, URI. Each, indeed, both of these are the same, uh, which isn't bad per se because this one is used in the backend for front end, I think at least. Yeah, backend for front end. And the other one is for FID URI. Yes, for the speaker API. Okay, so I will make. I'll change this. Mm, how to do this? Make this an object. Parameter object. You don't get nice intelligence when you do this. Speakers. I will make it like so. These consistent um, BFF BFF speaker BFF speaker API Yuri BFF okay and the back ends. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to the whole endpoints of. Well, okay, that's good for now. Which could be a bit cleaner, and well, I should create a client, uh, a client for my well backends, and invoke those strong types instead of having these URLs over here. Anyway. Anyway. So this should solve a location ID URI. So this quickly should go away now. BFF speaker. Oh. Why are these? It's never used. That's true, that's true. So the first one, this is BFF. 
Okay. Um, super. Can make this a bit more pretty also. Okay. Go away. Um, speakers. Okay. So now the squigglies are gone. Cool. What did I change over here? Clean up. Project. <coughs> Edit authentication. Okay. So what I need to add now is these values for the conferences. Okay, um, so this value is non-existent, um, no. API unknown. Uh, so the tenant is still valid. Why do this? Uh, I don't need to specify this like so. I can make authority. I make can make this concat. Tenant ID. That's better. Saves a value. Don't need this one anymore. Why is it red? Oh, I added this one. Okay, yeah, that's not necessary either. Unknown, unknown. Okay. So these two are the same. Which means I should be able to remove this one. Should be able to do this. And adjust the red one with this one. Looks about right. Still red. Still red. Why? Oh, I don't have every. Um, mm -hmm. Well, sorry, sorry. Well, don't do that. Mm hmm Why is it still red? BFF, yeah, because um whoa. What? 
BNF speaker application ID URI. Didn't I remove it? Yes, I did. Oh, I need to save it. Mm hmm. So this is in the back end for front end. Conferences. Okay. This. So the conferences, app settings, server farm, conferences. Okay, so this is the website, app settings. Should be able to put it over here. Am I right? Am I right? App settings, properties. Looks better. What did I do? And the conference settings. Okay, basic settings. Okay, and as you can see, what I well, I need to add these to the. Uh, I already did this. So over here, I need to change these app settings. Like so. Oh, uh, wow, that's convenient, already using this. Better place them together. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably using this in the speaker controller. Get settings, get settings. Speakers. Application ID, URI, speaker, API, URI. Okay. Probably going to need to strong type this later on by binding or using the options. I read using options has performance benefits. I don't think we or at least i need to worry about performance with this solution so this is fun will probably work configuration okay cool now i need to do the same Conferences, and I will probably conferences API URI. Okay, 
Krishna de Yuri. These were already prefixed. That is prefixed. Okay, so that's everything should still work now. Mm, will it? Will it? How about my settings? Unknown, so that's because I need, still need to create those. But for the rest, everything appears to still to be valid. I'll add these over here. Mm-hmm. Also add. So first the boring stuff. The boring settings and then my settings. So these are the app settings. Any more? Only those. Okay. Ordering the settings. Just to make it a bit more clear what we're doing and this this isn't necessary or during the settings it's just when i got a chance i like to have stuff consistent this stuff no doubt to this devops This is uh, this stuff is hosted on GitHub. Obviously. Able to merge. Next. 
Yeah, that figure is extra restriction to speakers, AI, cars, and other ways. So I'm going to click to function and conferences API. Create and merge, merge, squash. I like squashing uh, uh, nowadays, so I don't need to have a fast forward because then I will just well have multiple commits in the master. So squashing is. Uh, I commits from this brand will be rebased and added to the well. This one is good. Squash and merge. Downside is over here it's well orphaned now or this orphaned I don't know if that's the correct word it's just it doesn't see the change that I made Didn't it delete? Yes, it did. Probably needs to do some catching up. So there's probably a build going on now. Oh, wow, yeah. So I was doing GitHub Actions last week. And I don't think I will be using it, well, for this. Or at least not just yet has uh, well let's just say I think it has a steep learning curve and it's not as well grown up as Azure DevOps yet so let me see what does my build do does it do anything fancy I'm running on Windows hmm okay so this is stuff I can do with GitHub Actions. Okay, so I might put it over there, but I still need to deploy the stuff via Azure DevOps, or at least I don't have to, but the integration with Azure is quite good in Azure DevOps. Converting it will just take up a lot of time and doesn't give me anything. I do think I could build this on Ubuntu, which will make it a bit faster, or at least that's what I discovered when running my first GitHub action, which was based on Ubuntu. And well, builds were about 100% faster on Ubuntu compared to Windows. That's useful but this takes a long time how long does it take already it, it will take about three minutes wonder what it will do when building on linux oh cool GitHub will invoke this. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. So, um, what do I need to do? Making a small note over here. Um, what do I need to do in the A, B? I got it open. Azure Active Directory. Let me go to this real quick. There's not much special. But what I need to do is. I already got an app registration for both of them. But I want to create new ones. Create app registration. Speaker. Speakers. Okay. Um, nothing fancy. I need. Need the application ID. ID of this application, or at least I think I need it. Uh, Need the ID. So I'll open up. Sorry to do this all blurry. I just learned it's a good practice to make it blurry when you're not sure if you're showing actual secrets or not. Sixty-seven, sixty-seven. Okay, cool. Mm. Redirect Yuri. Don't think I need to redirect Yuri, but better add it. it only from my tenant okay certificates and secrets don't need it token configuration don't need it API permissions only the user read Graph, expose an API. Um, action ID, URI, with API. Well, make it the apply. Make it the client ID. Uh, do we want to add scopes to it? local testing if if I can optional at scope at the new scope application with the value of Hazel Studio. Yeah. Okay, and the roles and the manifest. So
Mm -hmm. And do this to fork. So that's it for the app registration. So now I got all the details I need for the app registration. I thought I also needed something. Oh yeah, I need it. Add the manager's identity. So it was this. And for this, I need location ID enterprise location. Uh, let me see. Or the object identifier. That's ID of the enterprise application. Uh, is this correct? Nine one something. Nine one something. I need the principal ID, which is the managed identity, and the role ID. This looks about it's an AD REST command or that you can do it via the CLI. And you can also do it via PowerShell. One moment, I'm almost done, almost done. Okay, okay. And in the enterprise application, I can also do something. Mm. Properties. Yes, user assignment requires. Okay. So that's uh, quite a list. That's quite a list. I'll go back to my resource group. 
and I came up with this list. So what I need to do in PowerShell or uh, in a scripted way is create two app registrations. And for these app registrations, I need the application ID, I need the tenant ID, because I need to put them in, uh, well, I don't need the application ID. No, no, I don't need it. Maybe for referencing, but I don't think I need it. I do need the application ID URI, which I will make API slash slash the client ID, so which will be this. And the redirect, I don't think this is necessary. I want to set only oh, my, my tenant is supported. API permissions, I think this one is granted by default. For local development, I need to add Visual Studio with uh, to the authorized client applications. Uh, it's probably doable. Adding the roles to the well to the manifest. It's probably doable. And when everything, when the app registration is created, I need uh, to grant my the managed identities uh, the appropriate roles via, well, for example, this PowerShell. But for this, I need the object identifier of the enterprise application of my managed identity, and obviously the role, which, well, is specified by myself, so this is rather easy to get. Uh, these two are a bit more tricky, but probably doable. Probably. But that's something for next time. Uh, this is not something I can do or will do in, in one minute. Um, adding a page, scripting app. Registration ID. Okay, so that's this part. Um, make the sub page. So I make a sub page. Mm -hmm. So this is interesting. This will be interesting, or at least to me, to make do this automated which is something I can use during my day job also. But closing it, stored in one out. So how's my deployment going? So this one is deployed. Oh. So Deployment to Azure failed. Why? I wonder why the pull request triggers a deployment. Why did it continuous deployment? Why? Have I configured continuous deployment? I thought only when an artifact was No pull request trigger. So did GitHub create a build? Oh, 19 minutes ago. PR. Okay, so a PR build is created, which is good. But I only want to deploy when include master okay i don't want to deploy stuff from pr okay save Only deploy from master. So it's good to have a build running when when a 
PR is created. And uh, this one, oh, it failed. Why? That's not fun. Template parameters. That's because I changed them. Am I overriding them over here? Oh wow, ah, kidding. Okay, so that's not a good idea. Why? Oh, that's because I don't want to have these secrets. Um, well, yeah, these secrets, these parameters in GitHub. I could, but I don't want to annoy all of you with uh, these values. Mm, so these aren't found. Maybe I know. Mm, authority can be created. Authentication. Client ID. So it did pick up this one. Oh wow, oh so I have committed these values. Okay, sorry, sorry for this. <laughs> oh that's so annoying for all of you. I will I will delete them. Um but first I will copy paste these values. Uh, we have speaker API. Oh, sorry, application ID, Yuri. Uh, I didn't need the application ID URI anymore. Okay. Mm. So what do I have over here? Speakers, application ID, UA conferences. And they're now doubled. Okay, and Just have to mm -hmm. uh, speaker ninety nine. stuff well, I'll commit this directly to master okay, pushing it trigger another build and probably deploy the stuff. Uh, 
And I don't want to wait for this. Maybe a... Mm. No, I'll change this to Ubuntu later on. Builds on Ubuntu. Okay, cool. Well, as I said, that's it for now. Um, I don't know if you learned something. At least I got some time to clean up, uh, clean up the solution. Hopefully, the the project will build. Uh, let me let me check. So it's uh, oh, stay safe. Fixed. Oh, uh, right. Methods. Okay, and the pipeline is running, so that will probably take about three minutes now. It was a successful deployment, or at least I hope so. And then uh, I can continue next time. I don't know if I will do this next time. Uh, it's interesting, but I also have some other projects I want to spend time on, like improving the ADR CLI tool, which I uh, started with. Uh, it's very useful, or at least I'm using it in the, my current project, so it's useful. It's well, it's it's good if I improve it during the the night, during the evening, because then I get to benefit from it during my day job. Uh, so I'll just I'll just see uh, what I will be doing next time. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching, and stay safe, stay healthy. And hopefully see you next week.